Oh, okay, we're going there. We are going there together. I mean, we've, we've never talked about this before. We've talked about Photoshop and Lightroom and Premiere and, and lots, lots of other things. This, we've never even dipped our toes in, but today we're doing that. Don't freak out. I'm doing everything I can to make sure this is easy for you so that you, uh, you're not gonna just combust. I'm excited. You should be excited too. Let's turn this thing around. All right. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to yet another Tutorial Tuesday. And today we're talking about Adobe After Effects. So, like I mentioned in the intro, we've never actually talked about this program before. We've talked about everything else, but we've never, never even dabbled in After Effects. And I've seen a lot of comments and questions and emails and DMs and, and a lot of people wanna know, uh, why don't you ever do After Effects tutorials? Or would you do After Effects tutorials? Or I'd love to see something from you in After Effects. So that's, that's today. So I figured we would start with this. There's probably gonna be multiples of these because this this program's a beast and I don't think I can tackle this all in one video and you guys know how I, I, I talk a lot so uh, this needs to be split up for sure so let's just call this After Effects Basics Part 1. So I'm going to run you guys through the interface of the program, show you what it's like, where things go, try and simplify it for you as best as I can and then I think we'll just make a simple title like animating a nice title that's, uh, that's tracked through 3D space if you will and I find these actions just help me explain things better. We'll track a title so you guys can put those types of things in your videos or your vlogs or your travel films. It's a very good kind of like introductory small little task for a program as much of a beast as After Effects is. So what is After Effects? After Effects is kind of, I describe it as like the Photoshop of video. You can do so much in After Effects. Whenever you see special effects happening, like in yesterday's vlog when you saw that Nerf gun turn into rah, that's After Effects. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you saw what I did for Gary V with his new shoes. That's After Effects. Its possibilities are endless. People use it in such creative ways. It's an incredible complement to video, really allowing you to just kind of expand your horizons as far as your creativity goes. So if you get a handle of how good this program works and you get good at it and you practice, your skill sets, your worth, your everything as a filmmaker or an editor is, is just going to be that much better. So I figured it's time that we, we kind of dive into this and start maybe knocking some of these out. So this is the part where you go make a coffee, you grab a drink, you do a hundred push-ups, have a power nap, run around your house six times, whatever you gotta do. We're gonna open up Adobe After Effects for the first time. Let's go. All right, so when you launch After Effects for the first time, it's gonna open up with that project window, the same as if you open up Lightroom or Photoshop or Premiere, and it's going to ask you what you wanna do. So you're gonna hit new project. Okay. Pause for a second. This is the interface of After Effects. It looks kind of the same as Premiere. You'll notice you've got the timeline down at the bottom. You've got your workspace up top. You've got some kind of file storage, some bins, some area on the left side for your, your stuff to go, your files, your videos, your music, you know, whatever you're gonna throw in there. You've got your effects on the right side. So if you are kind of like a seasoned pro or somewhat seasoned by, you know, having used any type of Creative Cloud products from Adobe before, this shouldn't look too foreign, but there's still probably a few things in here that you're gonna be like, so let's keep going. All right, so on the left side, you've got your project window. This is where all your files get dropped into. You've got graphics, if you've got music, if you've got whatever you need, that's going in the left side. Very much similar to if you're gonna put all your footage into Premiere to start editing, you're gonna drop all your goods, all your assets into the project window. All right, immediately to the right of that is your composition window. That's where you're seeing what you're working on. That's where your video is going to be. Everything you're adjusting, all the stuff you're tweaking, all the effects, the after effects that you're putting on your footage and your video, that's the main spot for it. On the right side, kind of like Lightroom, you've got that big panel of effects. So that's where you're gonna type in your different effects, text tools, changing your fonts, all of that stuff, whoop, over here. And then running right along the top of that screen is your toolbar. So that's where you've got all your different points and text tools again and, and little things that will change based on what you're doing okay so project files main composition windows effects zip toolbar and then at the bottom you've got your timeline just like video editing it's gonna work exactly the same that timeline is where everything you're working on 
just like any other timeline that you are familiar with. Oh, so far so good, right? You guys are still with me? We're not getting into scary waters yet. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag in a drone shot from Iceland of me walking on this airplane. I'm gonna drag that into my project files, just like we talked about, because that's where your project files go. So what we want to accomplish by the end of this video is having a title on our footage that tracks into the scene and it grows and kind of moves with the camera as the camera continues to fly over the plane, right? So instead of just putting a title on the screen and the drone shot moves over the plane and that title never moves, we want it to feel like that title is in the same environment and that camera is moving over it and closer to it and the closer that drone gets to the title, the title's getting bigger. So that's the objective of today. We're gonna start with that. It kinda looks a little bit like this. Now, if we really wanted to get crazy, we could mask out some of that text so it's behind me when I'm walking, but that that we'll save that for maybe like a part two, don't even, we'll just, uh, moving on. Okay, so the first step, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click on that footage in your project window and drag it down into this little icon that you're gonna drop it on that and then let go. So that button is the create a new composition button. So when you drag your footage, whatever that is, right into that button, it creates a composition based off of those settings of that video. 4K, because I shot this in 4K, 24 frames per second, all of those are baked into that timeline. That totally makes sense. If it confused you, essentially, we're taking the drone shot, we're dragging it into that icon, it's gonna open the window up and make our timeline the exact settings we need them based on the settings of that drone shot. So this is a 4K clip, so it's massive right now it's taking up a lot of our composition so let's just go ahead and click this little arrow right here and fit that to screen so that's looking a lot better we are nice and crispy 4k that's full res you can click this little drop down here and change the resolution which is actually gonna render your projects faster you see unlike Premiere Pro where when you drag your footage in it's rendering in real time so that you can play through your footage and edit without having to wait for render times but After Effects doesn't render in real time so dropping that quality is gonna allow you to play back what you're doing and what you're working on without having it being choppy or anything like that or having to wait for render time. So I always recommend dropping it to like a third quality if you don't need to see the quality for whatever it is that you're doing. You can always change it back to full, but for this case, I think we're gonna drop it down. Okay, so we basically need to mark our in and out points on the clip that we just selected so we know exactly what piece of footage we're working with, like what part of the footage we're working with. So go ahead and hit space bar, that's gonna play the video. All right, so this is where I want the footage to start. So if you click on the actual video in your timeline, which is this little blue strip right here, you can grab the front end of that clip. You'll see the arrows pop up. You can click and drag that to your timeline. Now, if you want it to snap right to your playhead, hold down shift, it's gonna snap right over. If you've got a full-size keyboard like I do right here, uh, you can actually use page up and page down to go frame by frame. So you can fine tune that last part of the clip that you want when you have it. You can drag the footage from the very end, holding shift right back to your playhead so that you've condensed that whole clip into just the portion you want, essentially in and out. I believe you can also use B and E for beginning and end. Might be N for end. There's so many shortcuts. Okay, so once you've deciphered which in and out point you want and you've trimmed that down, you're gonna move that to the beginning of your timeline and then we're gonna do something that's gonna just make everything a little more efficient and a little easier to deal with. Now, if you notice that little blue bar that is your footage, right above that is the time ruler. So we're gonna go all the way to the end of the timeline, we're gonna grab that time ruler just like we did with our footage and we're gonna drag it all the way to match the end of our clip. Then we're gonna go up to composition in the toolbar and we're gonna select trim comp to work Work area. So now it's gonna take this little clip that's our footage and it's gonna take all this stupid nothing space that's just gonna annoy me and it's gonna obliterate all of that and make that entire timeline our entire clip. It's just easy to deal with, easy to think about, cleans everything up, get it done. Okay, so we've done that. That's the easy part. Go ahead, head up to the toolbar, hit that T for text tool, type in whatever you want. I'm going to type in my name, Peter McKinnon. This is the beginning of creating our title so that we can track it through space and time. I just love saying that. It just sounds so great. Like we're gonna, we're gonna track a title through space and time. Come along, I'm in. All right, so now that your text is on the screen and you've got your shot playing, go ahead and play that through again, hitting space bar. You'll notice as the camera moves closer, as the drone flies closer to that plane, that title doesn't move, it stays the same. 
frame. Doesn't look very good. It's just small. It's a standard text on frame. It's just meh. How do we make that better? That's where I'm saying we want to track this title so that as the camera moves forward, the text becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as if the camera's actually moving towards text in real time. So to do that, we need to create something called a null object. Now a null object is going to be something that you come across very often in After Effects. So let me explain what a null object is with regards to tracking this title through space and time. Okay, so a null object is like an invisible aid that lives on the screen when you're editing. Now you can't see it, it's never gonna appear in any of your videos, but you're able to attach different effects to it and it controls different effects throughout After Effects. So different things that are happening on screen, different things that you're trying to make happen, all sometimes run through this null object and it enables a lot of different cool things to happen, like what we're gonna do with tracking this text. We need to track that text and attach it to something on screen so that it ends up working. That's what a null object does. I'm trying to explain it in a way that's not gonna completely melt your face. But let me get into this edit a little bit more and then I think by the end of it, you'll understand it's just one of those things that you need as a step to kind of begin using After Effects. Okay, so to activate this mysterious null object, and if you wanna know more about that, I'm sure you can Google it and get a better answer than I could possibly figure out how to convey to you. But just right click in your timeline, hit new and go over to null object. When you click that, a red box is gonna show up. That is your null object. That's just the little invisible box, the little invisible controller box that's gonna live on screen for the rest of this edit. You'll also see it down in the left corner where you see all of our layers, if you will. So we've got our footage, we've got our title, and now we have null one. Okay, so now is where it gets a little confusing. Refill your coffee right now. <laughs> what we need to do is have After Effects track all the pixels in this scene. It needs to just play the scene forward and it needs to analyze and track the movement of the scene, which is our drone shot flying forward. After Effects needs to figure that out, it needs to map it. Once it's done that, we attach its tracking data. We attach what it's done to this null object. So then when we take that text and we attach that text to the null object, it's also tracked because they're both running through this little helper, this little invisible aid that is the null object, okay? So we track the scene, we attach those settings to the null object, then we take the text, attach it to the null object, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. Click on your footage, that's the DJI clip for me, whatever it is for you, you're gonna click on that layer, probably the bottom layer. Then you're gonna go over to the right side where it says tracker, and that's gonna bring up a little window. If you don't see that, like anything else, you can go up to the top of the toolbar, hit window, go down and make sure that tracker is clicked. If it's not, go ahead and click that, then boop, your little toolbar is gonna appear on the right side. So if it's already there, you're golden, follow these next steps. So you're gonna click track motion. Once you click that, it opens up a new layer window. Now you might be like, huh, where did my composition go? But if you notice at the top here, it'll say composition DJI 0001, that's my clip. So whatever your clip is, that clip's gonna be over to the left. What I mean by is it opened a new window is now beside that we see layer one, which is that track motion layer. So your other composition is still there, we're good. It's just opened a new window so that it can perform this task. Now you'll see right in the middle of the scene, it says track point one with like a little white box. Now we're gonna wanna zoom in so that we can see this better. So hit plus and minus on your keyboard to zoom in, zoom out, but go ahead and hit plus and get up nice and close to this so that we have a very good view. Now you'll also notice this footage doesn't look very good right now because if you remember at the beginning, we dropped that quality down to like a quarter so that we could render this thing faster. So right now, just for you know simplicity's sake so that we can actually understand what's going on, let's bring that quality back up to full. Boof, look at that crispy tastiness. We're back baby, 4K, mmm, feels good. But now we can actually see what going on. So now you can see our track point number one box and what that does is tracks a group of pixels across the screen and calculates its movements but we're gonna need to make another tracking box because we want to do two things here. We want to move into that text so we need to track moving into that text but we want that text to also scale up and move bigger. So we need to track that scale as well. So we got two things happening at once here. Don't worry we're fine. We're good. You'll see over on the right side here we've got position checked off. You're gonna go ahead and hit scale. Make sure that one's checked off too. And then a second tracking box is going to pop up just like magic. I got nothing. I got it. You thought it was going to do magic, didn't you? You were like, it's coming. No, no, you don't own me. 
So just to double check everything is in good working order, you can go ahead and hit edit target. Now a little window is gonna pop up and you're gonna see that the selection is selected to null one. That's the null object we created because remember, we're trying to track all these movements and send all that information to that little invisible helper, that null object. So making sure that's where it's going is good, which it is, golden, hit okay, boom, moving on. So now we just need to pick two things in the frame that we can lock these little boxes onto that After Effects is gonna use to track this scene, right? So high contrast points. We don't want to choose the fluffy, faint little cloud in the distance. We don't want to choose the part of the boot that's moving as I walk across this plane because it's moving too much. We want to choose two nice, solid, stationary, high contrast points that aren't moving very much. So After Effects says, thank you. I can easily track this scene for you. So we're going to do that by selecting these windows here. I think we're going to go with one window on the right side and a window on the left side. Sometimes this can be a bit of trial and error, but it is doable. I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so click and drag tracking point one. That's the box. When you click and drag it, it's gonna like magnify the area that you are hovering that box over. That's what's happening right now. So this nice sharp edge of the window with that high contrast being it's black inside, we're gonna use that for our first tracking point. And maybe we'll try this window over here on the right. That one may be a little iffy, but we're gonna track that one as our second point. So again, we're gonna click and drag that to that point. Essentially, we're like we're sticking targets on this frame so that After Effects says, okay, we got your targets and I'm gonna hit track and we're gonna we're gonna let us do our job and we'll try we'll try to hang on as the scene moves. And let's go ahead and do that and see how it does. If you want to just double check your tracking points before you go ahead and hit track on After Effects, what you can do is skip forward a little bit in your timeline. This is a little, little pro tip here. Skip forward a little bit in your timeline and that's gonna obviously show if the scene has changed and the scene has changed. That's not a good spot to track. So let's go ahead and change that. We give this program a better chance. All right, so let's go ahead and move this up to this little black hole here. I believe that was part of the ladder that was like in the side of the plane to, to get up. So let's go ahead. That's a nice high contrast area. It's nice and dark there. So let's start with that. All right, so let's zoom out before we do this. You can go over to that drop down menu right here and hit fit. Now we are going to analyze this frame forward by hitting the little play button down here where it says analyze. All right, let's see what happens now. The frame is moving forward. You can see it's tracking. Everything looks good so far. Uh, looking good still. Oh, it's looking, it's moving a little bit. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so After Effects just lost it. That's what I mean by it had those tracking points. It was locked on nice. It gave it good information. It tracked all the way up until it just slipped at that last second. And this is what I mean by sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes you gotta do this a couple times. Once you get used to it and you start tracking different things, you'll know what tracks well. You'll know where good contrast points are. And sometimes you nail it on the first shot and you're like, mm. sometimes it takes three or four times, but that's just just all part of the process and the beast that is Adobe After Effects. So we're gonna go to where it slipped up and we're gonna adjust it so that it just kind of hangs on for the rest of the frame there and then we're good to go. We're gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see this a bit better. You'll notice that you see two boxes. The inner box is the one that After Effects is actually tracking. You can click and hold and see the exact point where the program is looking to track. That second box, the outer box, is kind of there to make sure that that little one isn't moving inside it. It's kind of targeting that little one. So they've got, it's almost like a bad backup system. So if that little one moves, we can drag that outer box bigger to again, make that target area bigger, give the program again, a better sense of tracking. Essentially, we just don't want that little box to move out of bounds. So in order to do that, we're going to make those bounds bigger by dragging the outer box larger. That way, you know, it's got more room to, to move around without that big box losing sight of it. We're going to increase the little one as well, just so that the target area is even bigger. And that way, when we reanalyze this, it's just, it's not going to get lost. We can go ahead and do that for both both sides. All right, now that we've adjusted that, we can hit play again on analyze forward over here on the right side. And it's just gonna overwrite all the tracking points it did before where it went off. Now that we've adjusted it, it's just gonna continue moving forward, keeping all the data behind it. Okay, so it's a little slower to track because those boxes are bigger, but it is locked on, it's looking good and perfect. So obviously it slips up and leaves once the plane is no longer in frame, but ladies and gentlemen, we have our scene 
tracked. If that was traumatizing for you, my condolences, rest in peace. But <laughs> uh, I don't think it should be. Again, I would watch this tutorial like two or three times and then try to make this, try to do these titles yourself. You'll be a pro by the end of the day. So now that we have all of this tracking data, we wanna move it to the null object so it has all that information stored inside, our invisible aid living on the screen. So all we gotta do to do that is go down to the right side where that little target tracking area was and hit apply. So little box is gonna pop up that says X and Y, just hit okay, good to go. Now look at your timeline. Look at all those crazy little diamonds and motion track. <laughs> just nonsense. Go ahead and collapse those in the layers panel in the bottom left corner here. You can hit these little arrows and we'll just get rid of all that nonsense. That is way too stressful to look at. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. So let's go ahead and hide that. Okay, so now that we've tracked this scene and we've connected all that information to the null object and it knows what we're doing and it has all of that information stored inside it, we want to attach the title to the null object. So now the title will take on everything that that null object has stored inside. And we do that by connecting it on this layers palette down here. There's a little zigzaggy thing, a little swirly pick whip is what they call it, the pick whip. How much fun is that? Pick whip, pick whip, pick whip, pick whip. I could say pick whip a thousand times. <laughs> Pick whip. You're gonna click and hold that pick whip. You can you just fling it all over the place. It's just so satisfying to do. So we attach that text to the null object by clicking on that pick whip, dragging that line over until it highlights null one, which is that null object that we created and let go. Now we've assigned all the settings of the null object and all the tracking stuff that, that null object has stored inside it, our invisible helper, and we've just attached the title to that null object. So now it should take on the same character Characteristics. That should make sense now. You might be going, oh, I see it all coming together. And you can see if you were successful with said pick whipping by in the right side here, you can see where it says null one under that little menu drop down, so you know you've connected it properly. So now when we play this forward, this is what it's gonna look like. Looks great. That little glitch there at the end is where we lost the tracking data because the plane goes completely out of frame. So that's pretty much where we would stop the title. So let's just scrub our timeline, our playhead right to the spot in the frame where that information's gone. You can see the text kind of snaps a little bit. That's where the tracking just went, peace, I'm out. And let's drag using the right side like we did at the very beginning of this. Let's drag all these layers over to that playhead, snap them right to that playhead, hold shift if you want, snaps them right in. We're gonna get rid of those trimming comp to work area. So now our whole scene is exactly the scene that we want. It doesn't lose the tracking information at the end. The text isn't wobbly. It is a full sequence from start to finished, tracking our nice title in space and time. <laughs> Keep in mind too, you can move that text wherever you want on the screen. It doesn't have to stay in the center. If you want to move it to the right, to the bottom, whatever, it does not matter because all that information is connected to the null object. So you are free to do what you want, but we're going to keep it in the center because that's where it looks cool. If we were coming up at the beginning of a vlog or a little short film, right in the center, <sighs> tracked right over top, mmm, tasty. Now we could get crazy and start changing the fonts and then actually mask out the title so that I'm walking in front of it, like that, that's, I've said too much already, that's, that's definitely a part two. <sighs> okay, relax guys, take a deep breath, you made it, you finished. That is it, you're done, you did it. We survived, you survived After Effects part one. Do you think you can handle part two? I think you can handle part two. What I would recommend is delete everything you just did and go back and do it again, like five times, so that you really get the understanding of what a null object is and being able to use the pick whip to attach your text and your tracking points to the null object and just really understand how that whole system works. Go through the compositions, go through the timeline, go through the project files, the effects and just kind of familiarize yourself with the shortcuts or anything else that you can so that you can get comfortable with it. One of the things that I really like to do when I learn a new program is if I learn something specific, I learn a certain task, I will repeat that task like five to 10 times so that when it comes time for me to actually do that or make a title for a video, I've done it 10 times already. So I know exactly where to go. Composition, new composition, drag this in, trim to, all that stuff is just muscle memory at this point. So that's what I'd recommend for you to do while you 
wait for me to make part two because I've, I've got no idea when it's coming, but I will make sure it comes in a timely manner. I also had tons of requests to teach how I did the Gary V video. Maybe we'll think about doing that, but hey, I'm proud of you. Thanks for sticking around. Good job if you followed that to the end. If you're already in seasoned After Effects Pro, well, I mean, I'm jealous because I'm not, but welcome and thank you for staying. <laughs> Other than that, guys, hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. Just punch it in the face. Hit the bell if you want to be notified anytime I upload videos. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and, I got a plane to catch. I'm going to LA. See you guys in the next one.